Are we willing to work with them? Absolutely, but they have to have two feet in the door. They need to be willing to allocate some serious funds towards advertising, and they need to give us the product for free, right, on consignment, which means that we don't pay for it until it sells because we're putting in our time and we're putting in our labor, and we expect the same back from them. Quick little story time. So we, we, we represent the brand on Amazon. It's a Nestle company. And uh, last year, they were allocating $1,500 a month for, for ad spend. I, co I convinced them, or I showed them the data. I didn't convince them. The data convinced them to bump it up to $4,000 a month. So for all of Q4, we had $4,000 a month. And the goal in this past year was to grow their brand from, I think in 2021, we purchased about 300,000, 400,000 in cost of goods. The goal this year was 750,000 in cost of goods. And we, we hit that goal, right? We came a little bit shy, but we got very close to it. They were very impressed. But then I had a conversation with them and they said, hey, Eric, we're taking the, uh, the ad budget down to $2,000 down to $2, a month. We're taking the ad budget down to $2,000 a month. And the, the new goal in cost of goods is a million dollars. And I'm like, guys, you want me to grow your business by you know, another 30%, but you're taking away half of my ad budget. Like, it just doesn't make sense. We gotta re rework these things. You know, so they said, okay, we'll start with 2,000 bucks. You bring the data back, which we'll show you how to report that in a little bit. You bring the data back and then we'll reconsider this, this ad budget. You know, and that's the answer I was looking for. I'm not looking for like a stern, absolutely not, we're stuck at 2,000. It's like, no, show us the data and we'll go more aggressive on the ads. Some other things to look out for, inconsistent price points out of stocks, you know, dozens of sellers on the listing. These are all huge selling points for finding brand exclusives. Right, we all know that on the Amazon marketplace, it doesn't matter if there's 12 sellers or one seller on it, the product's gonna move the same amount, right? If, if there's nothing being changed to the listing, if there's no campaigns being ran, the product's gonna move the same amount. You don't get extra traffic because there's more sellers on the listing. So for the brand, it would be much easier to maintain if they have an established relationship with somebody and they could see where that product is flowing from and to from one source versus 12, 15 sources. And then lack of EBC, enhanced brand content, brand registry, a brand storefront. These are all things that create a customer experience on Amazon. How many of you have seen a brand storefront before? I would hope everyone, right? Or enhanced brand content when you scroll to the bottom of the listing and it looks like their website. Right, like that's super cool. That enhances the user experience. These are all things that you're gonna help these brands set up so they could become a powerhouse on Amazon. Fun fact, back when I started, the storefront used to be on a separate page. It wasn't even on Amazon.com. It would take you to a separate page, so. All right, so first things first, we're gonna cover poor quality listings. So this is an actual listing on Amazon. This is a Costco or BJ's product. Looks like someone just purchased it and literally took a picture on their kitchen table. I used to do that. Right. I, I used to do that with Did all the- Did you take that one? I used to do that with all the, that might be one of my images, may, might be. Hey, listen, I'm not gonna read this word for word. You could you know, take some notes on it, take a picture. Uh, but essentially there's some requirements to make images optimized for Amazon. You know, there's pixelation requirements that you have to hit. So when you're on a phone, you know how you can zoom into those photos? and see all the ingredients and the nutrition facts, like that's because those photos are meeting this pixelation requirement, right? And the things need to be shared. And, and any, any product except for books, books are supposed to take up 100% of the listing screen, the image screen, and every other product should take up 85% with a white background. White background, no no text. No text. Obviously, if there's text on the packaging, yes, but no additional text added. Don't be that person that adds bonus product or free, anything of that into the image. Um, actually, you can't even be on the listings. And um, and yeah, the white background, which, which Eric mentioned. And by doing the correct pixelization, you get the image that's zoomable, right? I, I hate when I click on something, I wanna double click it to zoom in, and it just doesn't happen. That's because they didn't format it correctly. Yeah. And now, how, how, how much, anybody got a guess of how much uh, an optimized eight image listings, listings will cost you? Optimized, you know, full eight images. I'm talking a, a cover image with the 85% coverage and the white background, an infographic, um, an action shot with like a family using the product or eating the product. Any guess? $1,500. No. Anybody else? A dollar? 
No. Somewhere between them. Somewhere between those two. (laughs) Listen, I've been using this lady on Fiverr. It's like 80 bucks. She creates me, it's 10 bucks an image. She creates me listings that are now selling. Some of the, those listings are selling what? Three, 4,000 units a month. And yeah. we're the only person on the listing. Yeah. Dominating 100% of the buy box. And I paid 80 bucks to get the listing created. You know? That's crazy to me. That's crazy. There's so much opportunity out there. And this is like a great example of a product listing that, that looks amazing, right? It's got the cover image taking up 85%. It's got a cool little infographic. You can see exactly what it's used for. It's, it's, it's very straightforward. And what do we got up there? Seven photos. Seven, fo- seven photos, and the eighth one could have been a lifestyle image. Somebody in the kitchen put, put it, putting it onto that uh, egg holder. Yeah. Or it may have been a video as well, because with an enhanced uh, brand content and brand registry, you're able to add videos to these listings. And video really is the future. I mean, uh, just think about it. It, It's exactly what happened with TV, where where from from pictures to motion picture to now, everything is is that way. And and commercials, who who wants to see a a still frame commercial, right? A billboard of a commercial. You you want to see it moving around. And same thing is happening on the internet right now. The same exact things. If you're, how many of you have been searching for products while you're sourcing, and you now see on Amazon all of a sudden advertisements popping up, videos popping as you're scrolling down. That's the future. I don't see images lasting. I really see the forefront, the main is going to be, in the future, is going to be a video. 